Mr. Secretary, I have to be honest with you, I'm extremely disappointed. You all didn't like the original amendment offered, and at the request of the administration, we engaged in a good faith effort to try to create an amendment that would have the maximum effort on Iran's uh, um, certainly on, the, on its economy and the minimum effort on any disruption in the oil markets of the United States. That original amendment had no waivers whatsoever. Maybe we should have allowed that to stand. Maybe we should have allowed that to stand. That's the vote we'd be having. At your request, we engaged in an effort to come to a bipartisan agreement that I think is fair and balanced. And now you come here and vitiate that very agreement. So that says to me in the future that when you come to me and ask me to engage in a good faith effort, I have to, you should have said we want no amendment, not that you don't care for that amendment. Now, having said that, let me just say, uh, everything that you say in your testimony undermines the credibility of your opposition to this amendment. The clock is ticking. The published reports say we have about a year. Now, when are we going to start our sanctions regime robustly? Six months before the clock has been achieved? Before they get a nuclear weapon? Now, this amendment was crafted in such a way that gives the president two significant pieces of discretion. Number one, to determine that there is sufficient supply in the oil market that would not create a disruption. And if he finds that is not the case, then the actions would not go into effect. And secondly, notwithstanding that he might find that, yes, there is enough oil in the market that would not create a disruption, that, in fact, he has a second opportunity in a national security waiver. So I find it pretty amazing that you all come here and say what you've said in response to the chairman. And let me just say, I looked at the, the Treasury Secretary's letter. Nowhere does he talk about economic disruption to us. Very interestingly, I think he would have made that case if, in fact, there was any such disruption. He actually makes two statements here that I think are pretty uh, redeeming of our amendment. He says, number one, Congress has been absolutely critical in providing some of the tools that we have used to accomplish the goal of tightening sanctions. Now, but for Congress, you wouldn't have had the sanctions, and I have never seen this or any other administration come before the Congress and say, please, give me a sanctions regime. So you have rebuffed it every step of the way, even though it is the sanctions law that we have given you that has allowed you to seek some limited progress. Secondly, he says, the sales, referring to Iran, the sales of crude oil line the regime's pockets, sustain its human rights abuses, and feeds its nuclear ambitions like no other sector of the Iranian economy. Well then, if that is the fuel that allows Iran to, its march to nuclear weapons, then you need to cut off the fuel. And that's exactly what we are focused on doing. Now, uh, I... <laughs> I find it amazing when the Europeans are considering doing some of this. Certainly France in particular has been advocating such a measure in international reports earlier this month when it was revealed that Iran is moving closer to building its own nuclear weapon. Uh, the European nations are discussing imposing their own embargo. So we basically say to financial institutions, do you want to deal with a $300 billion economy or do you want to deal with a $14 trillion economy? I think that choice is pretty easy for them. So I, I find it pretty outrageous uh, that when the clock is ticking uh, and when you ask us to engage in a more reasoned effort and we produce such an effort in a bipartisan basis uh, that in fact you come here and say what you say. Uh, which really undermines, uh, certainly as it relates to this member, your relationship with me for the future, because you're not going to tell me uh, that please engage with us in an effort to find a more refined uh, uh, solution. And then when we do that, say you, you, you don't care for it. It would have been more honest to say we don't want any amendment whatsoever. Now, the fact is that several major energy traders continue to make prohibited sales of refined petroleum to Iran, and yet our response has been to sanction the front companies, 
like the Royal Oyster Group, rather than the major figures behind these sales. You have been reluctant to sanction Chinese companies for energy sanctions when there is ample evidence that they are violating our laws and there is precedent for us uh, sanctioning Chinese companies for nuclear and weapons proliferation concerns. So you haven't, sh even though we've given you the tools, you haven't shown us the robust effort when the clock is ticking to use that which we have given you. So that causes us, that's why 80 members of the Senate in a time in which it is very difficult to find bipartisan agreement, 80 members of the Senate have joined in our Iran's North Korea Syria Sanctions Act uh, because they understand that just as the Iranians move to circumvent the sanctions regime that we have already imposed and to find ways to achieve loopholes, we understand that we must be a step ahead of them and that we must close those loopholes and at the end of the day be able to ensure that our sanctions regime is effective. And so, uh, you know, uh, now had you all embraced that effort, uh, maybe we wouldn't be where we are today if you had used the sanctions regime you already have to be more robust uh, at the end of the day. Instead of taking the shell groups, go to the heart of it, we wouldn't be where we are today. And if the Europeans are considering an embargo, uh, we shouldn't be leading from behind, we should be leading forward. So I think this amendment that we will hopefully vote upon uh, today is reasoned, it is balanced, uh, it gives the President discretion both to determine uh, the oil markets and whether there are sufficient supplies. And look, uh, Libya is coming back on track. Uh, you know, uh, we, we see uh, certainly Iraq uh, producing more. The Saudis have a great ability to produce more. So I, I find it uh, disconcerting, to say the least. And uh, I don't really have any questions for you. Uh, I just felt that uh, after having vitiated my amendment, uh, I wanted to put the record straight here. Thank you, Mr.